Welcome to the FinTech Scaling Show. This podcast is sponsored by ScaleUp Consulting, helping FinTech startups create a scalable organization to support an ever-increasing demand. When you're ready to grow, reach out to us at Richard at ScaleUpConsulting.co. Now, over to the show with Richard Doherty, partner and host. Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of the FinTech Scaling Show. On the FinTech Scaling Show, we talk to cutting-edge leaders, leaders and we, we chat to them about their experience and their insights in scaling their businesses. And today, really excited to welcome Gabrielle on the show. Gabrielle is the CEO and co-founder of CoinRule, and he's had a really interesting background. I mean, you have worked as an investor, as a consultant, you've worked... Uh, as a mentor and you're all working as a, as a mentor and you've also worked across you know different industries so a wealth of experience and knowledge to tap in today so welcome mate and uh, looking forward to the show today hi everyone hi brilliant so let's jump into it and just for every, for all our listeners today you know as i always say at the start of the show have a notepad and a pen available. There's going to be some nuggets that you can take away directly and start actioning in your life and in your business today to get you towards your ideal scene. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at, you know, a leader's journey and how, you know, Gabrielle as a, as a leader and you all as, as leaders need to really organize yourself and your life in order for you to get to your desired desired state your desired outcome so let's jump into it and let's start off with you know this a topic around organization i think i think that's must be the, the the easiest place to start and what i'd like to know gabriel is you know we started the you know off off air we were talking about you know, your busy schedule and uh you know investor calls and operational meetings etc but when all of these things are going on in your life, how do you organize your, your day, your week, your month, your quarter, and even your year to make certain that you are, are moving forward and also you and the team are moving forward together? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So in terms of organization, I'm a little bit of a Nazi. Uh, so uh, I'm very, very structured and I have one, one central point of reference that's, that is my Google Calendar, right? So everything that I have to take, to take in consideration, it's on my Google Calendar, even if it's a note, even if it's like any, any, anything is, is there. And there is a, a very specific rhythm that I follow. Um, so usually uh, the Mondays are for planning and uh, I book uh, I book the, the, the all day just for the team and to talk into, to talk to everyone in the team. So there are no external calls. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so the Monday, like we have uh, the product planning, we have design planning, we have uh, the leadership planning as well. We check the OKR. Then middle of the week we have on, on Wednesday, we have what's called the antisocial day. So basically everyone is just like heads down working and uh, I only do uh, one check-in with the, with the, with the designers. Mm -hmm. And then on, on Friday, we have the day where actually we check the OKR. So we introduced the OKR framework uh, around like three months ago and it's working very well. We adopt a very light version of it. So we don't use any specific tool. We literally, you just use a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that kind of gives us the rhythm every week uh, to focus on on the main OKRs. Also, the OKRs, we only select around five of them per mm -hmm. quarter, so that they are very clear and they are easy mm -hmm. to communicate. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is my, my usual rhythm. Mm -hmm. Then uh, on top of that, uh, I have uh, I have some specific uh, some specific um, uh, tools that I use, like Calendly, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, Calendly saves my life. Yeah. I have uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, organizing a meeting can take hours. We also mm -hmm. we have like you know back and forth. Uh, but with currently, this guy saves my life. Sometimes mm. the conversation becomes too transactional, mm. obviously, we, we, you know, when, when you want to meet someone because you just share a link. Yeah. But uh, what, with that one, we, we actually managed to have, uh, to have a very good uh, balance of mm. internal meeting with our team and external meeting with investors, mm. suppliers, and, 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 uh, and um, also interviews with external candidates. Mm. Uh, also, another thing that I do I say usually my meetings are not um, not long. So usually the maximum like 15 minutes. Mm. In extreme cases, 30 minutes. Because usually in 15 minutes you can you can really 
you know, go straight to the point, communicate uh, what you need to, to, to say. And, uh, mm-hmm. and also in case you can also extend it slightly you know, for, by, by five minutes, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. So having like a, a lot of uh, short meetings really helps me just like get to the point and, uh, and also have a lot of uh, time to actually do delivery work because uh, at the moment, Coin Rule, my company, it's a 12 people company. We are expanding, you know, probably doubling by the end of the year. Mm. Uh, but still, uh, a CEO at this stage, mm. you do strategy work as well as some delivery work as well. And uh, you want to have a, a hands on approach in the team. And you mentioned OKRs and you look at OKRs on a, on a Friday and then that gives you the rhythm for the next week. So, what do you do? You look at, uh, you know, things that have gone well and things that have gone bad, uh, maybe not so well uh, from an OKR perspective on a weekly basis and sort of try rebalance them and refix them going into the next week? Uh, yes, totally, totally. I mean, you know, you know the saying, like, uh, planning is good, plans are bad, right? So <laughs> the, the actual the exercise of planning, it's very good to bring all the team together. For us, it's, it's not really about like, you know, what we have to do and, uh, and what we have achieved. It's more about bringing everyone in the mindset of, of working towards a business goal that b- brings value to the users instead of mm-hmm. getting lost on some platform work, infrastructure mm-hmm. work, and then you really then forget w- what you're actually uh, producing and delivering. So mm-hmm. for us, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a tool to bring people together. And then every quarter, we have one big meeting with the extended team mm-hmm. where, where we actually set, set up the new, the new OKRs. Mm-hmm. So this is what we do. And then we have also another thing that's very interesting. We started to do... Uh, few months ago it's called the idea box mm. so the idea box it's it's something that uh, enhance and and really facilitate the sharing of ideas so it's a box a virtual box where everyone can can put like comments feedback ideas and then we open up we open that one every three months and then we share uh, all, all, the, all the content and then i, I, uh, I, I go uh, i go and i actually add all those all those ideas into the roadmap uh, and uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the main key to, to keep keep organizing for me is just like decluttering constantly. Mm. So mm. I delete emails, I delete uh, calendar invites. Mm. I'm just like just going around cleaning up everything and deleting, just removing the dust constantly. Nice. And you you also mentioned the the antisocial day. What, what is what does this give you as a as a leader and also as a as a company? Just being able to block out the noise. It feels like you're blocking out the noise and just focusing on you having one day to focus on the stuff that you need to focus on in order to reach your objectives for that week yeah yeah i mean literally uh that, that's what we aim for to have some some space mind space to strategize but then uh at the end of the day it, it's always end up like that we do the, the work that's very important so i would yeah. say on wednesday like the half of the morning, it's antisocial, but we still end up like talking to each other uh, in the team. But then the afternoon, it's really where uh, my creative brain really activates. You know, from yeah. 2 p.m. onwards, I, I become much more creative, much more thoughtful. So that's on Wednesday afternoon. It's that where I sit down with my notebook and I, I sketch a lot. Mm. My background is in, in design and the UX design. Mm. Um, and then I went into business. So for me, uh, I usually I make use of uh, the visual intelligence a lot. So I need mm. to sketch things, you know, box flows flows mm. and, and all these diagrams to actually mm. understand uh, the structure of the team how we need mm. to transform the mm. the culture all the single roles and and usually wednesday afternoon the the social day for me it's it's vital really without that space where you can take a step back and see the macro picture you know i think the company will be will be without direction without that that, that the specific uh, window and having this structure in place it feels like you actually you you the, you the cause of, of your own destiny i.e you you're putting in a structure that means you're moving in a direction and having space to move in that direction all the time so in a way your your priorities are automatically uh, automatically uh, also I guess known or created and also meetings that will come in at certain points in the week or certain points in, in a uh, in a month are then scheduled correctly so you can still go on your rhythm and pick up the things that are maybe ad hoc and and what have you when required is that is that correct yeah uh, uh yes I, I try i try not to have ad hoc meetings anymore uh i know that makes the work uh too mechanical and, and serious you know 
Yeah. Uh, and not like so so like organic, but uh, I think I like kind of I would say seventy percent of the meetings are kind of systematic, you know, mm. programmatic. Like in, in and they're like in three months in quarters, and then scale down in month and in week. And then I, I try to have maybe 20, 30%, just leave it like some space in case there's some ad hoc meeting. Mm. Um, but um, I think that the, 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 the trick is always to, to understand, like, do we really need to have a, this meeting? Not, mm. It is a priority. I mm. usually have my, my daily uh, post-it where I, where I always write down five things to do. And mm. five is the right number because if you already achieved three of them, you already done most, more, more than half. Mm. So you feel already that you achieved something today. Mm. Um, so usually my average is like I finish four things per day and there's always one left that I bring the next day. Um, so I'm very, very functional and, and operative, but sometimes, you, you, you know, on Wednesday I take that space to, to also kind of sometimes just push the brake and, and, and change the combine drastically. It happened actually last week. Yeah. Uh, we had like, a, a proper, like we, we run a proper agile process with the two sprints, you know, planning, retrospective, uh, product refinement. Um, but I saw that it was not working. So we have been trying that for like uh, six months, um, the way we are doing now before it was like shorter sprints. Mm. And uh, and yeah, it was just like two, we had a team of eight engineers and it was not really functioning, uh, mm. performing. So what I did, I just I was like, guys for three months, let's just try kind of an approach that where everyone works on the same uh, module of features. Like, mm. so imagine like six, uh, six to eight engineers, actually we left one for maintenance, seven engineers just working on one thing. Mm. Um, and, uh, and actually it seems that it's working. So, and I took this decision just out of like um, ideas by reading and by, by strategizing, then mm. kind of uh, having a brainstorm with my co-founders, but it was, everything was done in one or two days. So we had to, to basically manage and switch the, the, the structure of the team, change the structure of the team within, within basically one day. And uh, funny enough, I mean, the people really li liked it and people enjoyed to work in this way because they feel more that they're working in a collaborative way. And, and when they work in a collaborative way, me as the one that's supposed to, to lead them, to direct them, um, mm. it's like, just like, it's much more easy because mm. they, 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 you know, they are more receptive to, to, uh, to the ideas within that collaborative framework. Mm. Um, I think my leadership style is, is uh, collaborative most of the time and sometimes I just switch to command and control when there is some emergency. But so having uh, people that are happy to work and collaborate and brainstorm, for me, it's very, very important because it's also what you do when you work as a designer, as an architect in the creative mm -hmm. space, right? Everything is always like a, 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 a trade-off. It's mm -hmm. always like uh, sketching together on, on a whiteboard using post-its. And that's the way uh, I usually try to also, um, you know, uh, insert in, our, in my company. And, you know, I guess you mentioned this uh, in parts of this question, but as you move forward and grow up, how are you, how are you making certain that you as a leader and also you as a leadership team are, are doing the things that are in your strength zone, right? So you guys do the things that you're good at, and then you, you bring in superstars to do the things that that they that they good at yeah i mean uh, the, i think it's a balance right you turn the superstars uh you know I, I, we employ people that are much better than you they're much more like, expertise than you in specific uh, sectors uh but then uh, you need to have the founders the leaders that actually nudge everyone into a specific uh, direction mm -hmm. and and I, I i know if i'm good at that but i do a, a lot of that i'm like day and night always nudging trying different different way of communicating the same thing in, in, in different modes and um sometimes I, I mean i don't mind to over communicate i don't mind to be yeah. boring um and yeah to, to always be like the old guy that repeats the things 20 times mm. uh, as long as then the message is clear and and the, i think i think that's the, the that's the secret like sometimes you know when you get like a very senior person in the team we, we now just got a new cto mm. it's amazing because you don't need to specify uh each like task or tickets or strategy mm. in details because they just take the stuff and they, they go and they actually build something much better. Mm. So I think when you have a senior uh, leadership team, you can you can really rely on them. And I mean, you're paying them so much and you know, they, they really, they can really change your company for, for good. So you can mm. you can just like trust them 100%. I think the, the art of delegation to delegate, it's very, it's something that you, you, you have to learn uh, pretty early in your, in your company, in your startup. Uh, I think 
uh, now I'm, I'm used to the first year, maybe I was a little bit less more like a micromanager, mm. but now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable because also the, the, the level of people that joined is much, much higher. Um, but I think it's, it's uh, you know, the superstars are good, but they need to work in a team, like, like in a football yeah. team. So, and, and, and I mean, the, the, the leader is the one that has to, to merge all together, everyone in the same, in, in, in one big, big uh, dough. Um, and uh, yeah, I think- Because it, it, it's like this, right? You, you, you guys are, well, we, you, you leading you, Let's you know, let's take football. Uh, you know, Mourinho is out in Italy now, right? But you mm-hmm. know, he, he's a good coach. Uh, you know, um, popular to to contrary belief, but uh, he's a good coach. He's he's got really good players. He's got superstars. He's got he's got an ecosystem that he has to manage and he has to push forward to get Roma to to win win a title, right? So, mm-hmm. in the same way, you know, as a as a founder and as a co-founder, you are coaching at a point in time when you're growing up you're coaching and you're making certain that your team's coming together you're gelling them you're increasing that leadership balance the, the people underneath and you're pointing them in a direction giving those those nudges as, as you call it and also delegating different types of you know roles and responsibilities to them so they can um obviously fit within the, the ecosystem but also excel yeah, and, and and obviously the people that you promote actually define your culture. You know, the, the people that you fire also define your culture. Yeah. So basically, being a being a, a leader, a co-founder, uh, being up there, you 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 know, it's a kind of it's a difficult role because you're constantly judged by everyone upside downside. You know, my investors are like mm-hmm. now more than twenty people, and they always look at me and they ask me stuff. And then I have the team, and then you have the advisors. Mm-hmm. So you're constantly judged for what the, whatever you do. Um, and, and that kind of signals specific uh, part of your culture. So uh, th- that's why it's also important to to lead with with the specific values and principles, so that mm. you can have the, you can set up those those uh, those uh, boundaries and those those frameworks for people to play within. So we have the value of uh, diversity. We have the value of life work balance. We call it life work and not work life because mm. for us life comes first. And, mm. and, and the job should be around you and accommodate your, your life, mm. should, should be like flexible. That's why we call that. So for example, in coin rule, nice. between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m., you can work whenever you want. Some mm. people have kids, some people have hobbies, they go mm. off two hours, they come back. Mm. For us, it's a big value. Now, mm. setting up that framework mm. really makes people act in a specific way. And, mm. and, uh, and um, if you get a superstar that doesn't want, that you see that doesn't fit with those values, obviously that can be disruptive in a, mm. in a negative way. Uh, so it's very important, obviously, recruitment, or when, when you get people in that they actually understand what are the values. And mm. and obviously, as, as, a, as a CEO of the company, I'm mm. doing like uh, so many interviews every day. And, and I think my job is now finding the right people, right? Um, yeah, sure. yeah, because a company is actually a company, it's made of people and the people yes, then- the denominator, the denominator is people, right? Exactly, and, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it's crazy, and it's also a statistical job, right? You interview yeah. a thousand people, and then potentially you get twenty that are good. So it's really it's a it's a relentless work to actually find good people that also match together, and then give them the values to to connect yeah. to each other. So, so what's your philosophy in dealing with people? You know, it is a people business, although we, it's a tech company that that that, yeah. that that is there. But you know, what's the philosophy? How, how do you deal with? with investors, with the, the recruitment process, with all these different characters? How, how do you approach that? I mean, um, I mean, obviously different people want to get, you know, something different from you and you need to treat them in a different way, especially, mm. you know, there is the, the big uh, dichotomy, like, uh, you know, introverts and extroverts, that's the, the main thing. And yeah, then yeah. you got the, the more technical guys and the more creative guys. So they have yeah, yeah. Four, four dimensions, right? Yeah. So I try to be flexible, but I, I, at the end of the day, the best uh, the best thing is to have a co-founder that is complementary to you, so, mm-hmm. so, so he can take some type of conversations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where where I can take some type of more kind of more straightforward and more direct conversation. Um, for example, with my co-founder, he's very good at um, kind of being the moderator, very nice to everyone. When usually I'm the one that comes in and have a specific angle, a specific view, and try to give like specific direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, so with people, um, it's usually I try to be like kind of non-nonsense. So like literally like, hey man, like like being very, very uh, open, transparent. Um, when, I, when I write an email, when, when I also talk to someone in a conference call, I always think that everyone else is listening, right? Mm. So there's nothing that you can take at any point in time uh, from my communication and say like, oh, you said this, what, these things that actually was offensive or was unrespectful. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I always have an approach that's like always being on stage, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that approach shows to the others that uh, they can have, uh, you know, the communication is always the same for everyone and, and we are very open. And that's how I treat people like, like the same way, like with, with common sense. And obviously, culture, the common sense can be different from, we have people in the Maldives, people in Nigeria, yeah. people in Lithuania, in UK, in Italy. Yeah. Um, and that that's a bit tricky, for example. So mm -hmm. we found that the main, uh, the main characterization at this point, what makes people uh, change the approach in the communication, it's a uh, religion. So mm -hmm. the people in the Maldives, uh, they're Muslim uh, and you know, it's completely fine, but they have, they have a different approach to authority, right? So they will never push back on me. Uh, they are very, very respectful. And that sometimes can be an obstacle in terms of, uh, you know, mm. big frank and communication. Uh, the people in Lagos, for example, in Nigeria, uh, they are more like a proper Catholic, mm. even more than me that I'm in Italy. Mm. And, uh, and for example, they really, uh, they have a lot of compassion and they drive, they drive with, with that value. So I think uh, mm. I try to adapt to those different, uh, different cultures. Mm. Um, so by, by giving them space, by asking continuously like feedback, Mm. um but obviously like it's it's difficult, it's difficult. but that, mm. that's my but that's my way of of uh, of managing people and treating uh, basically human resources like trying to be as close mm. as possible to their culture and uh, and just really explain the, the full picture because you know everyone is a brain uh, and mm. uh, you know everyone can understand business talks and mm. marketing and they are best you know business is basically best practices it's mm. not rocket science so yeah. if you explain to an engineer a developer or to a, you know, a designer uh, something about business, you know, it takes like a, maybe 15 minutes more, but then you will have someone that has learned something and it's more like it's buying into the mission. Mm -hmm. I hear you. And, you know, I think I, um, I like the, I like what you're saying there about culture and you, you brought, you brought in the, the African culture, which is, uh, very tribal. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. people are, I'm, I'm, uh, originally from, from South Africa. And I know that, you know, they, they have the, the Zulus and causes there. And it's very much, you know, the chief says this or the head of the house says that and everyone has to sort of follow suit, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important uh, to have empathy, which I think what you said, to have empathy for people's backgrounds and people's cultures. And you quite nicely said you, you're, you're open to engaging with them and trying to figure out a balance. So there's a... Um, the, there's room for communication, right? Mm -hmm. Totally, totally, and, and and it's it's hard because sometimes we just end up spending a lot of time, like you know, explaining things two, three yeah. times. But I, I don't see any other ways. Uh, if you want to have a fully remote company, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, for us, when we yeah. recruit someone from the UK, it's just like a no-brainer, super easy. Yeah. You know, I, I've been in London for like twelve years. I yeah. always worked in the UK, so I have that type of standard of work. Yeah. Um, but uh, so when you get someone from the UK, it's just like, you know, everything is so easy. Um, but then, you know, you don't get access to a, a huge uh, a talent pool. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's why we are, we are fully remote. But also yeah. because we believe in the future of work that is basically everyone is almost like an, a, you know, an entrepreneur mm -hmm. that joins a company because you like the missions. Mm -hmm. And actually the best employees for us are the one that contacted us and they really loved the crypto space and they were passionate about that. Mm -hmm. And they really mm -hmm. wanted to, to improve the, the, the user experience in that mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just going back to, you know, the, the, the structures of, of, of your, of your business and how you, how you set, set yourselves up to, to success, uh, to, to succeed. You mentioned earlier on that you give, you give people the, the free reign in a way, you, you give them the space to, you know, log in at seven and, and log out at 11 or, or 12 o'clock that same night. And they, they drop in and they do their stint and they, and they complete their, their deliverables or whatever they, they need to, to complete. But as a, as a founder and as a co-founder and a, a, as part of the leadership team, I know it's difficult to switch off. Uh, it's difficult to start and it's difficult to stop, but how do you, or have, have you come up with a, a way to sort of start your day, start your, your habits, and then also stop your day at a certain time that allows you to, um, live life you know you mentioned mm -hmm. life and work um so yeah it'll be interesting to find out how do how do you start your day how do you stop your day uh, what are the triggers and habits that you put in place to uh to make certain that sort of that rhythm is continuous mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think 
Uh, I mean, just to have a laugh, but I think being Italian helps that helps on that, you know, like being Italian is like, I, I like to enjoy life and it's not yeah. hard to enjoy life as we show for me. I can see with my, uh, my co-founder is much more stressed. You know, he comes from East Europe, half British, half British, half German and half Moldovian as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically I, I think in the evening, I, I just, I cannot, I cannot function more than seven, eight hours a day. That, that, that's the truth. So I switch off, then I go and play tennis uh, in the evening. I play a lot of tennis. Um, and uh, I always try to go out every evening, like for some cultural activity, meeting friends and dinners. So I think that's where, where I mean, I, I can switch off very easily in the evening, but in the morning, uh, when I wake up, I have my, my few uh, things to do. Like, you know, like uh, I have like my heat training that is like only 10 minutes, but it really activates my brain. Yeah. Uh, I, I start working uh, with um, with like uh, after breakfast and then I have a stand, uh, stand up desk. So I, it keeps me more, much more active. Yeah. Um, and then during the day, I'm really like, like a train. I'm very, very fast on everything. Very, very functional. But then uh, around... 6 6 a.m 6 p.m I, I have a crash and i just i, I need to do something else and yeah. uh i i know i used to have a lot of hobbies obviously with the companies I have less less of them but uh yeah i just like i just like to refresh my brain with with other things that are like not related to business you know it goes from art painting like nice. anything then it's like so many things. even cooking I, I love cooking anyway so are well, you italian uh, Exactly. Yes. 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 Exactly. And, and uh, but this is you. You creative, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it also it, it's it, these other activities stimulate your creative part of your brain. It obviously, switches off, and you come back the next day, and you're like, okay, fine, I can go off and I can create again. Yeah, I think uh, you know, my, my back, I, I was working. I've been working for like what. Uh, 15 years as a UX designer, head of yeah. UX and stuff like that. So uh, he went from, you went from a phase where, uh, you know, the art design was my passion and then it became a profession. Mm. And now that uh, I'm actually an entrepreneur, so I'm more like based on business, art is, is again like a passion and, and I love it. I really love it. Uh, I just like, just to take my brain off the, off the, the rational thinking that uh, I have to do every day as a, as a product manager and leader. Um, so I think that that's now my free time. I think it's it's about art and design, and the, and that creativity then yeah, stimulates my, my my thinking because you can also uh, have creativity at uh, you know in, in your business world even on on an Excel sheet when you actually mm -hmm. do the financials you can be creative. Creativity can be applied to anything, and also all the design thinking techniques you can apply them uh, widely. I think the design uh, design thinking and methodologies are in our DNA mm -hmm. in the company. Like mm -hmm. everyone does user research in, in the company, talks to you users translate that into sketch everyone really yeah. so um it's 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 funny because um it's very interesting what, what comes up you know when we take a developer mm. and they start doing design and you take a design and start to do programming so i really like the interdisciplinary uh, approach in, in my company and you know for, for our listeners out there that are that are moving on and and growing their business just just as you are what are what are the top you know maybe tips that you can give them both personally and professionally to to look out for and uh, as they continue their journey uh their journey uh i mean um, in their professional career i think um there is a huge focus nowadays in the podcast and uh, being always switched on and always learning you know reading a lot more um it's nice to to read but it's nice to read stuff that are unrelated to work so at some point uh, i mean i had so many books about business and i just realized that for the last five years i just read, read business books yeah. and so i stopped doing that now uh so and i'm really just reading novels because it's much more interesting to be honest mm. and uh, so i think uh and, and then obviously uh there are also like uh summer schools that you can take if, even if you're like uh you know, much more like your family or kids. Mm. Um, so I, I think there are several ways to learn, not just about, uh, it's not just about podcasts and books. What, yeah. what, what, what I also make use of a lot is mentors and advisors. I always mm. go around and ask everyone for advice, mm. always. Mm. Like mm. on LinkedIn, even people that I, I don't know, I just contact them. It's like, hey, look, can I, can I pay this amount for like one hour of your time? Mm. And that's amazing because people have so many like nice experiences and they have so many methodologies that they've modified and mm. used in a specific way. Mm. So that's really, really cool. Like a mm. mentorship. So when, when I do mentorship at Google and also at Imperial college, um, and, uh, and I also like to be mentored a lot. So mm. that, that's why I, I like that approach. Mm. Oh, awesome. And as you guys are scaling up and moving on and, and growing, uh, what as it as a leadership team, what are you, what factors are you considering and what, 
what questions are you asking yourself to make certain you hit your, let's say, let's hit your 12 month targets okay. and that your, hit your vision and your mission that you, that you set out to achieve? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the main question at the moment is, uh, are, are the guys in the team at the moment, uh, guys and girls in the team, uh, some of them are like ready to become manager because mm. obviously we are scaling up the company. We are going to have some mm. leads in each team. Yeah, yeah. And um, because there's always this dilemma, right? So you have uh, someone that's very good at his job. He's, a, I don't know, like our head of trading is very good at his job. Uh, and would it be good if we move him in another unit as a manager of 10 people? We don't mm. know. You know, sometimes it's just better to, to say, okay, you, you, you stay in that, in that channel and you continue mm. on that career mm. uh, unless they want to change. Mm. Uh, so that's the main, the main, the main uh, worry for me is like, uh, understanding how we scale up the team with, with a new uh, layer of management because every six months if you're an entrepreneur you have to change the structure of the company and change the way you work so your job changes every six months and you need to learn a new job every six months that's why being a, a ceo it's, it's it's difficult because it's constant learning journey it's a constant learning journey and uh, so that that's the worry now in the next uh, 12 months we have one main matrix that is mrr so mm. monthly recurring revenues. Mm. And uh, yeah, we, we have like uh, 200K MRR. So at the moment you are at 100, we just need to do a, a 2X on that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's the main, the main like business metric. Oh, brilliant. And you already mentioned self-education, but I'm going to put you on the spot. I mean, what's, uh, what, what podcasts or books or YouTube channels or uh, courses do you think uh, are are good, good for our listeners to either listen to or, or read that will allow them to, I guess, go to the next level and, um, you know, scale up their, their knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's see podcasts. Uh, I'm, I'm, I usually listen to uh, James Archer. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's, he's pretty cool. I like him a lot. Uh, and then, uh, and then sometimes I just scroll, scroll on my app with the podcast. And I just jump on a random podcast about anything, really, like <laughs> like about sport, about food. But uh, the one about sports, I really like them because they they, they they tell you all the challenges that athletes going through, and mm. I feel like an athlete on the business side. And then in terms of books, uh, I mean, there was this one, this book I read two months ago was the Flash Boys. Mm. It's amazing. It's it's the basically this is the the story of. Um, how uh, high frequency trading was born and it's these two guys that did crazy stuff in the 90s to, to yeah well, like they, they 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 run a cable from new jersey to, to new york uh, like a huge cable just yeah. you know and 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 they tell you about how you can have like uh, better orders and 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 better trading just by being closer to, to the exchange so they, anyway so it's it's amazing it's an exciting story actually uh netflix is is making a movie out of it i think it's coming out next year as well yeah, oh, it's brilliant. gonna be one of those books, like you know, the Wolf of Wall Street, one of those for for for, for male male audience. Um, and then another one that's also very exciting. I'm reading now. It's um, Hackers and Painters from yeah. uh, Paul Graham, and that's pretty cool. There is the first part. It talks all about like uh, high school and how the community of students, uh, are, you know, teenagers uh, deal with life, and yeah. that that's very interesting. But then it starts like moving into actually the difference between hacking and engineering. Yeah. And, and also uh, designing. And that's, that's super, Great. super interesting. I think a lot of people will find uh, a lot of uh, similarities in, in their, their job if they do start up. Brilliant. And listen, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on the show today. And for all our listeners, at the top of the show, I, I ask you to make certain you have a piece of paper and a pen and take notes during the show. And there's been lots of actionable nuggets. So look at those nuggets see what you can do to draw up a list and start actioning them from today. Get going. And if you have any questions, why don't you reach out to me at richard at scaleupconsulting.co. Happy to answer any questions off the, off the back of today's episode. And Gabriel, listen, mate, brilliant listening to you today and really uh, enjoyed our conversation and really looking forward to watching you guys scale up and uh, really move forward to, to your mission over the next uh, few weeks, few months, and also obviously a few years. Thank you very much, teacher. Thank you for having me.